One week with Shattered Space. Is Starfield's first DLC worth playing? Hello everyone, this is Richard. Welcome to Starfield Essentials! Shattered Space, the first Starfield DLC, arrived a week ago on September 30th. I've been playing it since then, with about 12 hours directly experiencing new content. Here is my mid-game assessment. There will be some mild spoilers in this video, to the extent that I mention game content and show background video with live play. I finished four of the seven quests in the main story. That means I have three left. So far, these main quests have been pretty good. The content has been solid, and the locations have been outstanding. Regarding the overall theme, it seems a bit weird to have House Varun rely on an outsider to save their society. This Stranger Savior concept reminds me of Frank Herbert's Dune. Incidentally, I really like how the Denis Villeneuve movie adaptation of Dune handles the relationship between Paul Atreides and the Fremen. And speaking of Dune, there is a developing set of Arrakis mods for Starfield. I've tried them with varied degrees of success, and I'll probably cover that in a future video. Back to Dazra. I like that we see House Varun as a collection of families, and not as a monolithic faction. I like that the Zealots are not acceptable to the majority of House Varun. It would be cool to see Bethesda expand on this collection of families idea by building out their crime syndicates in future content. In my last video, I expressed concern that the main city of Dazra seemed a little small, like Gagarin. I've revised my opinion, as I've gotten a chance to see more of the city. There seems to be much more to the interior of Dazra that is easy to overlook. This makes it more like New Atlantis in some respects. I like how there's a lot of supporting buildings and POIs around Dazra. I've spent a couple hours just exploring these other locations. As far as side quests go, I finished Sympathy for the Living, Divided Loyalties, and A House Divided. That means I have eight more side quests to do. In some ways, I think these side quests have been more engaging than the main quest. Certain POIs and quest locations have been a joy to experience. The Jandar's Rest location in A House Divided was a lot of fun. I tackled it with a combination of sniping, stealth, and brute force. When I play in the future with mods, I will probably take a company of UC Marines with me to clear out that location. I've also spent time wandering around Varun Kai, checking out the new POIs, and finishing a complete survey of the planet. One POI that appears way too frequently is Crashed Ship. These are all over the place, whether on Varun Kai or on other locations in the Kavnik star system. Now, beyond DLC-specific content, I've also worked on developing my character's relationship with Andreja. The character I'm using for my first run through the DLC is my original Xbox player, who is in the 130s regarding level, but has only done one new game plus. Before starting the DLC, I had completed the companion quest for Sarah, but had not performed the commitment ceremony. I mentioned in my last video that I started Shattered Space with Andreja as my companion, and that I had hoped for more commentary from her. We were visiting her homeworld and had learned how to get there. This was probably the most important piece of information she could have learned. Perhaps she could have said something about that, without revealing that she was a member of House Varun. Some commenters on my last video wondered if there was a bug in my game, perhaps caused by maxing out the leadership perk. I did have that perk maxed, so I don't know if that affected my game. I'll probably dig into the creation kit later to find all of Andreja's dialogue. Some commenters speculated that if my character had a serious relationship with Andreja, she might say more during the game. When I started the DLC, Andreja did not have any special relationship with my character. So, I took advantage of the DLC to develop that aspect of the game. During the last week, I have completed Andreja's companion quest. The following are spoilers if you have not yet done that. Skip ahead to the next chapter in the video to avoid this discussion. As you remember from the base game, the Varun spymaster Tomisar tries to stay alive by telling Andreja that he is her only link to her supposedly unknown homeworld. Given that the DLC begins with the discovery of Varun Kai, Tomisar should not have any real power over Andreja. The game writers have indeed introduced new dialogue options for the player that acknowledge the player's awareness of the location of Varun Kai. The interaction is still a little weird though. 
It seems Andrej's dilemma concerning Tomasar now depends on whether she thinks that the High Council will consider her a traitor for killing Tomasar. I think this could have been handled better. But overall, I was glad to see that this key interaction had been altered to accommodate the realities of the DLC. In the end, I encouraged Andreja to get revenge by eliminating Tomasar. I wanted to see how she would react. Looking forward, I want to see if the Varun High Council has anything to say to Andreja the next time we encounter them in Dazra. One welcome change involves making a commitment to Andreja. This was a concern with players in the base game who had chosen the Serpent's Embrace trait. Andreja did not seem to care if that was the case. Well, once you become promised in the DLC, Andreja recognizes this when you ask to commit to her. Bethesda did a good job revising this dialogue to accept the realities of Shattered Space. My character has not yet done the commitment ceremony, so I look forward to seeing how that develops. With the Andreja discussion out of the way, what do I think about what I've played thus far? I am really enjoying this DLC. I think the quest content has been excellent, and the gameplay has been challenging. I usually play with very hard player and enemy damage settings. Because some aspects of the combat have been tough, at least once I have dialed the difficulty back to normal. I almost never use Starborn powers when I play Starfield. Because I did not chase temples or new games with this character, he only has a handful of powers anyway. However, due to the frantic nature of some of the content, I had to rely on the phase time power to slow things down a bit. It reminded me of how I used the first power, anti-gravity field, when I was playing a year ago. I was so new to this kind of combat that I would hit the anti-gravity power whenever I was being overwhelmed. Stepping outside of Shattered Space, I want to discuss a decision I made and how it has affected my game experience. If you'd like to skip this part, please advance to the next chapter in the video. When Shattered Space arrived, I muted the R Starfield and R No Sodium Starfield Reddit sites. Typically, I'm an invested user of both subreddits, but I wanted to avoid spoilers. I've also stayed away from any so-called mainstream game reporting, whether on the web or on YouTube. Unfortunately, it's been impossible to avoid knowing that salty players have again review-bombed Starfield, and specifically Shattered Space, on Steam. Typically, I don't talk about such nonsense. However, thanks to the positive comments I exchanged with subscribers and visitors to this channel, I wanted to say something about it. I think it was natural to expect negative reviews on Steam for Shattered Space, no matter what the DLC delivered. A lot of people bought premium editions of the game in 2023, so Shattered Space was part of the deal. That group of angry premium owners have made it their mission to talk badly about Starfield. My hope is that with this DLC delivered, this cohort of negativity will move on to another game. We already saw some of this at work, unfortunately, when Star Wars Outlaws was released. Of course, there is still the possibility that some people will buy Starfield content, leave a bad review, and then get a refund. Why would I think of such a problem? Consider this Google query. Buy Steam game, leave review, get refund. What do you think is the first result? It's the Starfield Steam community page. This is not the only example either. It's clear to me that a significant and vocal number of gamers have made it their mission to speak badly about Starfield. Apparently one of their tactics is to buy the game, leave a bad review, and get a refund. Some of these people are salty PlayStation players who feel cheated by the Microsoft purchase of Bethesda Game Studios. Some are previous Bethesda game players who expected Starfield to capture or surpass elements of an older game that they enjoyed. Some are thirsty rage and hate tubers who chase clicks because negativity sells better than positivity. Don't get me wrong, I have consistently talked in this channel about what works in Starfield and what does not. Shoot, I've even done that in this video. I am not sponsored by anyone, and if that ever changes, I will be honest and open about it. My wish is that people who hate on Starfield would just let go and do something productive with their time. Those of you who want a regular dose of honesty and positivity are welcome to join my Starfield community here. I recommend subscribing because I post regularly to the blog section on YouTube. I'm actually a longtime cybersecurity blogger who first posted in 2003, almost 22 years ago. So writing has always been preferable to videos for me. 
Still, I do enjoy making videos and will continue to do so as long as I have something worthwhile to contribute. Let's conclude by talking briefly about bugs, performance, and mods. I'm playing totally vanilla on Xbox for PC. I'm not using any mods. Thus far, I have not encountered any bugs. I do wonder if I should be able to access an elevator platform in Dazra, though. The button doesn't work. I've read that might be by design, but I'm suspicious. Otherwise, I haven't had issues. My game performance has been solid. I play with an AMD 7600X and an NVIDIA 4070 Ti Super. My Steam game is where I play with mods. I will likely try updating my mods this week and see how they work with Shattered Space. I'm particularly interested in having the Gangs All Here mod work with the DLC. I need my crew in this game. So far, my limited interaction with the modding community indicates mods are working pretty well with Shattered Space. I will probably publish one more video on Shattered Space when I finish the main quest, and another when I finish the side quests. What do you think of Shattered Space? If you made it to this part of the video, please leave a comment saying, all must serve. Also, remember to ring the bell icon and select all notifications if you think Andreja needs to rethink her devotion to the Great Serpent. Check out my other videos if you want to learn how to keep your ship by building it in the Creation Kit, or my thoughts on the game's one-year anniversary. My name is Richard. I will see you in the Starfield.